fun, to take revenge, to go for it. What do you think, David? Definitely. Uh, Magnus loves having a score to settle. We see the handshake. The players getting ready any second now to get going. The clocks have started and, okay, it's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. Will it be a repeat opening? Italian game on the board yet again. Who has done the better homework in that little break? And how many of the moves will be repeated from the classical game earlier today? Bishop is on g5, so as Hikaru said, you had to play h6 earlier as black if you want to prevent that line. Magnus is entering the very same line, and it's solid. The way he played earlier so favors the player with the draw odds. He called it a cop-out. He's gone for it, Magnus <laughs> Carlsen. He's repeating the exact same moves that we saw in the classical game. And Ferruja, the first to sit back, pause, sip some water. Wow. Uh, mind games at play, Danny. I, I think it's a great decision by Magnus, honestly. And I wonder if Ferruja is ultimately going to be surprised by this, or if he looked at this with his second in between. We know that they've, they've quickly grabbed the computer and worked hard at times, right, where we can see them just over here to our right. Um, I didn't see them this time. Um, doesn't mean that they weren't preparing somewhere else. But, uh, oh, oh, wait, this oh, is preparation. Wait, he preparation. played G5. He's sacrificing a piece already. He played G5, and Ferruja sacrifices the knight without thinking about it at all. We are in for a thriller, boys and girls. This is not going to be a grinded out Magnus Carlsen draw. Ferruja is all in, and I love it. Yeah, this is fantastic Armageddon strategy. Um, Ferruja has his second here on site. Clearly some work was going on behind the scenes. Oh my God, so many Explosion. hanging pieces. <laughs> what wow. in the world is going on here? For the knight now? takes the bishop, the queen takes the bishop. <laughs> it's crazy. Black and they're both just splitting it out. Sorry, David, but it's just like both are prepared. Both know what's going on. Show us the lines, David. Show us the lines. <laughs> I'm not sure what to show you. I mean, right now, the Black Queen is hit. Um, she has to move. I think there was actually a lot beneath the surface just a moment ago. Quick action replay. G5 played. Uh, bishop to D5 was the last uh, choice. Uh, Ferruja here deviating from that earlier game. Knight takes G5. Fireworks. This is going to explode. Magnus playing Knight takes D5. This was given a mistake by the computer. Magnus maybe with no time um, to stop and consider all the nuances. And after Queen takes Bishop here, a quick count shows that White was temporarily a piece down for the last few moves, but uh, continues to gain Tempe. The Black Queen moves, and this, after the dust settles, is the position. The Blue Arrow makes an appearance. Queen to E2. Best and, and he found. And just played it. Has he not? Oh, I thought, yeah. Yep. Defending the F2 square. And uh, after all of that, it's level material. It's level material, but anything but level and balanced on the board. I mean, both sides have enough weaknesses to lose. Black is swinging the rook to h5. With checkmate attacks, you're going to double the rooks on the f-file, and the monster sniper of a bishop is just judging everyone on the dark squares. Go sit in your corner and judge people, bishop. That's what the bishops do. Uh, but let's count Black's weaknesses, because there's like 50 of them. <laughs> the a6 pawn, the doubled c pawns, the doubled e pawns, the Black King is wide open, the h6 pawn is a problem. Like, this is... This is a the definition of a three-result position, and here we are in Armageddon. Yeah. Ferruja, though, so confident, so quick up to this point. Some critical decisions that required a lot of calculation, and he's made those instantly, three and a half minutes up on the clock almost. I think Ferruja, he's got enough imbalance here to really uh, get optimistic now. Magnus shuffles his rook across, big threat to capture a pawn on g3. Um, the accuracy of value is a 98.7% versus Magnus's 95.5 and also more time advantage. Um, David, please show the lines. I didn't mean to cut you off there. I'm just amazed about this preparation. I'm still trying to digest it. No, feel free to jump in. That's just how exciting it is, uh, Anna. Uh, rook takes g3. I'm expecting either knight to e4 or queen to g2. Those two moves fend off the threats. But uh, queen trade doesn't seem to be up for Rouge's alley. I'm not sure style-wise that he would be wanting to do that even if long-term white has uh, a lot of weaknesses to probe at, knight versus bishop. I like knight e4 a lot. That knight belongs in the center, and it's showing how black's bishop is so not in the game. It has a diagonal that it's shooting at, but there's nothing on the diagonal. So once the knight goes to e4, the rook will need to move. I'm guessing rook to h5. We should really appreciate that Magnus is all in on the king side here, because every positional road or simplification path this game could take is just... Just ugly. The pawn structure has been completely torn apart. Um, 
And obviously, we got a lot of craziness ahead in tactics. But Ferrugia, I think here, rightfully managing his time a little bit. That was it was a little bit more of a thing than you would want. His three minute advantage now down to two. But I think he was right to just make sure he didn't get checkmated, David. That's my point because Magnus like shoved all of his chips in and said. I have to go bust you on the king side. But if the pieces start getting kicked back, that Ebel bar will just creep up more and more for white. And uh, Ferruccia will be in great shape. Yeah, interesting that Magnus, who's maybe the endgame expert of our time, kept the queens on. I think it's because of the clock situation. Um, an endgame knight versus bishop, that would go round and round forever and ever. Magnus wants to be direct. Um, just because he's lower on the clock, he wants to uh, make it as sharp as possible. Um, which should really sh uh, suit Ferruccia here. H5 very alpha zero-esque trying to use the pawn as a battering ram but the white knight is going to land on e4 soon um this is so sharp i don't think it's as straightforward as the eval bar would mention though uh which would suggest no i totally agree and it's it's even if white is objectively better according to the eval bar this is a practical game that's why it's played between two human beings who don't have the luxury of that and farouche is the one under pressure but he also knows if he parries the threats He's got a great long-term position. That is a very risky move. He's going all in now for the weaknesses. Knight a5 is his idea to attack the sea pawns, but you're taking a piece out of defense and out of the center on e4 and maybe going pawn grabbing. I'm a little nervous about this idea. Yeah, I thought he was heading toward e4 to attack the, the rook and also to be closer to the king side in general. Um, wow, David, what do you think about the king side attack now that the knight is heading toward the other flank? I mean, we mentioned Magnus going all in. I think he just has to be consistent. There's no way he's going to stop the uh, kind of uh, attack long term against the black pawns. Those pawns are likely going to fall if the white knight jumps in. Um, maybe you could slow it down with the bishop to b6 just to cover the a5 square. But ultimately, I think it's time to keep pushing those chips into the center. H4, go for it. I totally agree. I think I think H4 is probably what you have to do. But this is this game is going to come down to somebody flagging. I'm calling it right now. Like, this is, this is wild. Like, they're going to spend a bunch of time over the next few moves because it's so crazy, and then they're going to be blitzing it out. Like, this is going to be an absolute scramble. Farouz has been blitzing all day, it feels like. He's in the <laughs> rhythm <laughs> ever since that classical game, and three minutes still up on the clock, Danny. Yeah, well, he did spend an hour to get into the rhythm. Maybe that was it. The one hour spent on one move in his classical game. Wow, Magnus has spent a minute and a half here. That is really reckless time handling. The advantage is now squarely back in Farouche's corner, up three minutes on the clock. Weird little clock reset there. H4 is played by Magnus, quickly responded, and we have liftoff. Farouche trying to lock it up on the light squares so that the bishop on A7, A7 stays out. And if you can play H3, are you just shutting down the studio? looks that way. Uh, maybe the black bishop wants to come in to the f4 square. I'm not sure whether you've got time for that with black, but h3 looks it just looks like the most practical, Danny. It looks uh, like white should shut down that whole color complex, shut down any attack. A pawn on h3 and you have to worry about checkmate for the rest of the game. Um, this might be the critical moment, Anna. It seems to be, and I'm just loving it. I'm loving that this is Armageddon and everyone is going all in. Well, I guess Magnus Carlsen mainly going all in, but he's the one with draw odds. So the fact that it's black who has to go all in, because otherwise you don't have compensation for all the weaknesses in your position. This is great. This is what Ferrugia wants. For Magnus, This is he has to go on this path. There is no way out of it. I'm still shocked about the peace sacrifice earlier. Uh, it's just amazing to see. This scares me. The Ferrugia just allowed the pawn to get to h3. You, you called alpha zero earlier. Ring, 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 right? Pawn on h3, mating net. This is the idea that has changed the way these players play these positions because now everything else is going to happen. And at some point, there's going to be a mating net. Look at the king on h1. Look at the bishop guarding the g1 square. The pawn on h3 guarding g2. This is an idea that the modern day engines have pushed into the forefront. And. I, I really just don't like that Ali Reza allowed that. I think it's so dangerous because when this time scramble comes and players are inevitably making mistakes, that is so dangerous. He might be banking on his time advantage because he's very good at keeping his time advantage. He's keeping up with the pace of Magnus, meaning that he is, he is originally three minute time advantage, now two and a half minutes, but it's a lot when it comes to a game with no increment until move 40 and even the increment after is only one second. So Magnus will be in quite some time pressure soon 
Yeah, in the meantime, Hikaru Nakamura against Ding Liran looks like it might be in its closing stages. Hikaru has had to trade off a bunch of pawns. He's had to create a pass pawn of his own, the white H pawn, but two versus one. Ding still has plenty of time. Hard to imagine any big blunders there. Um, in the meantime, Magnus, wow, opens up the center. This one's coming to life. Yeah, he, he lets the E6 pawn hang with check. But Ali Rezafrusia doesn't take the pawn. Is that because we got to stay locked in here? But, you know, that's a, you know, eat your, you know, eye candy there. I don't know. <laughs> like, eat your heart out, right? What, what was going on with that? Um, by the way, I think Hikaru has a trick on the board if he plays rook g3 check and king h5, rook f3, like trying to swindle a king and pawn ending. Maybe that was his idea. Uh, but we'll see what happens over there. Okay. Um, what do we got here? Two minutes for Carlson, four and a half minutes for Ali Reza. Checks on the board. David, your thoughts? I mean, there's just so much to calculate. Taking a pawn, for example, going all in with white this time would allow the black queen in, perhaps. Imagine the black queen ever landing on the G2 square. That would be the end. The knight jumps in. I mean, this is just so random for um, a top-level game. But white has more time. Now, trade of pawns, attacking the bishop. I just I don't like that Ali Reza let that pawn get to h3. Yeah. I think that's going to cause serious problems later on, as you've called before. It's like a bone in the throat. And anyway, all right. Well, the scramble will be on. I already said I think we're going to get a flagging affair in this. Uh, both of these guys, for the record, have lost an Armageddon game in this event by flagging. Magnus Carlsen went down to Hikaru Nakamura, losing on time. Ali Reza Frugia went down to Prognananda, losing on time. So it has happened. It might well happen again. Magnus, one and a half minutes now. He very tentatively played that move. It looked hesitant. He nearly didn't want to take his hand off the queen. It is a pawn sacrifice. He's actually giving up a pawn on this square. But I think White's knight is so strong that Magnus would rather uh, see that trade, activate his rook, maybe via e5. There's going to be so many tricks in the air with uh, the White King that I think he's getting away with it. Um, Ferruja might want to keep tension on the board. If he can pick up this A pawn somehow, he has a pass pawn of his own, but it just looks so slow. Any queenside action. Magnus withdraw odds. I think I would take his position, Anna, but the clock. Yeah, the position I think is favoring Magnus's chances with the draw odds, especially so, but the time is, I think. It makes me really worried about Magnus's uh, situation overall. He needs some simplification so that he can speed up, but only also then. The increment is not enough. One second increment will not keep you in the game for long. Couldn't agree more. I think we're all on the same page. Magnus's position to be preferred for Ruzia bit off a, a lot over there on the king side where there were, were going to be mating nets against the white king once wonders start happening. I like Ferruja's idea of maybe trading queens. You highlighted the two-on-one. If you can get the past A pawn going... That could be very difficult, and that knight on c6 is perfectly positioned to just drive it up the board. But maybe that's the idea of rook g6. He wants to play d5 at some point if you're Magnus. You want to try to get that knight out of there. Um, or you're going to double on the f-file. Actually, that's probably the more clear idea. Just rook f6 on the next move. Which, by the way, is a direct response to Ali Reza's rook c1. Because the rook can't go to c3 anymore like it could go to d3. So now I'm like, uh... Nervous. I'm nervous. I just said I'm like nervous. Um, I'm like nervous. Okay. <laughs> like I'm like seriously nervous. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> You're nervous. What I'm, are the players experiencing here? I'm, I'm just on the edge of my seat here with these guys. <laughs> wow. Ferruja needs a trick. He's got a lot more time on the clock, but uh, Black's pa plan here just easier to play. Um, Alakine's gun, as the feature chat mentions. So I'm not right. sure whether it's the right order for Alakine's gun, but either way, ganging up, tripling up on the weakness. Really logical stuff from the world number one, Ferruja, deep in thought now. Yeah, he's burning quite some time here already, a minute spent on this, this decision, and that is making him lose quite some of his time advantage. Yeah, it's big. Time advantage is dwindling. That is uh, not great. It's another reason why I was just surprised Ferruja didn't just play H3 when he had a chance, because yeah. that's the kind of move you play in both. You kill the chances of the attack, it's a move you play in three seconds instead of what he took, which was about a minute to play queen e2 back in that spot. And I'm just scared. By the way, if the queen moves to the wrong square here, even moves like rook takes g4 are like winning on the spot. Like queen to d2, mm -hmm. rook takes g4, and the pawn on f3 is pinned because of puzzle rush checkmates on the back range with, with queen takes f1. So 
More and more, looking very scary for Ferugia, and the King of Armageddon might be on his way to doing it again. Despite the fact that Ali Reza has won every battle with White, it may not happen against, against Magnus if this pace continues. And Ali Reza already has spent two minutes on this decision and is losing completely his time advantage. It's gone. Now it's even. That clock situation, you called it, Danny, that this, this game will be decided in time pressure. I thought that can only be time pressure for Magnus, but now it's even the time situation. Yeah, and Magnus instantly replying, really hammering home his uh, clock advantage now suddenly uh, the Alakine's gun the tripled heavy pieces on the f-file creates so many threats Ferugia's lost control uh, he would love to have his king on g2 and a pawn on h3 but yeah the white king just trapped and uh, in practical terms look at this 40 seconds he's tanked yeah, he's this frozen is, yeah. yeah this is a mating net and and he and he doesn't like what he sees by the way Humpy Canero and Zhu and Jun have drawn their classical game. They didn't like what they saw anymore. They're going to throw down in the tiebreaker known as Armageddon. So we have nonstop action likely from here until the end of the day. Don't go anywhere. Round nine, Norway chess. Norway chess women. You know what you want. Yeah, Magnus getting all the pieces off the board. This game has completely transformed. It's an ending, but the White King is in so much trouble. The White Rook slides behind the A-pawn, but a losing blunder from Ferugia. The blue arrow uh -oh. makes an appearance. Uh-oh, D3 yeah, is a winning move, and Magnus is he about he, to reach for that pawn. I think he's just calculating the race. It, he, he sees it. Oh, he oh, doesn't see it. He plays rook to B3. three. D3, A5, D2, A6, and rook E3 was threatening mate. That's what Magnus missed. It's not he just missed. the threat of the pawn. It was a tempo, and now we're, now we're in a drawn endgame. Lucky for Magnus, it may not matter because a draw is as good as a victory. He wanted oh. to play safety first chess, but we see the clocks. Seven seconds against 40 here. Black just in time to hold the white A-pawn. But still complicated. Still anything could happen. Yeah, this is now... Oh, okay, five, three seconds. Four, three, two seconds, two. you gotta move. Wow, he's making moves with only a couple he's seconds. Got, uh, ah! He's gonna flag. I said someone was gonna oh, lose on no. time. <laughs> Sorry, I screamed. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Here is, I made a move with one second on the clock. And again, he's doing it. One second. It keeps going down to one second. He's not gonna be able to do it. Yeah, and, and the game longer. has gotten away, and Ferugia knows it. He shakes hand with the Armageddon King, accepts his first L with the white pieces in Armageddon here in 2024 Norway Chess. So someone's streak had to break. Ultimately, it was Ferugia's, and a great victory for Magnus Carlsen, who currently extends his lead over Hikaru Nakamura as the standings now set. What a game this has been, starting from that peace sacrifice in the opening by Ferugia, his